the like misrepresentation or the misconceptions yeah exactly yeah. that and i think what you what you have been doing in your career field i think has been really really important and i just think it's really important for other people to know about what you've been doing so it's, thank you actually for sharing your story because you thank know you. we need stories like this to be told and in terms of just to break that stereotype like we've been saying it a lot but this is basically what we want to be doing break that stereotype yeah. that had been there for like many many years so yeah so um, I guess one thing I did want to ask you as well was what do you, you see yourself doing in the next 10, 20 years in terms of your profession? Well, I'll still be a nanny because that's yeah. just me forever. But I definitely <laughs> want to be, definitely I'm going to be more uh, an entrepreneur. Um, I'm going to have my world of properties. <laughs> Open up a nanny academy in Africa, somewhere in Africa. Ideally, a few countries in Africa, um, because I'm very big on um, domestic workers' rights for domestic workers. I'm very big on making sure that um, everyone has the opportunity to have the education that they need in order to get into Nanian. And um, I've worked in Nigeria before. Um, I worked for quite a high-profile family wow. in Nigeria. And um, just seeing the staff, you know, that you have what they call the house boy and the house girl and just they work so hard but because mm. they don't have the um education to back them up you know they can't really demand you right. know the kind of pay that i was on so what to be honest my like i say my daily wage daily two days wage was like their monthly wage and wow. it was like what you know um and it's just it just things like that just makes me really sad because i feel guilty sometimes i'm just like obviously i know what i'm doing is is great but you know i'm seeing these people work so hard and they don't have their education so people mistreat them so that's very that's something that's very important to me so i really want to open up a, a nanny academy when i was out there there was a lot of women that were like oh my god we want to do what you do mm. you know um like i just sit with them and tell them my stories and they're like we want to do that how do we get into it you know and just show them that there's no way you don't need to limit yourself. And they're like, oh no, we can't do that. We don't have the money. We don't have the resources. So I think that's something I'm very passionate about. Open up a nanny academy somewhere in Africa. Um, I haven't quite decided what country yet, mm. but it's going to be more than one country. Right. Um, I hope to be in my big five bedroom house and manifesting it. <laughs> I'm going to fill it up with loads of godchildren and nieces and nephews and friends' children. Um, and I really want to become a foster parent eventually. Okay. So that's something mm. that um, I've always dreamed of since I was really, really young. So that's a route I might go down as well. Mm. Um, and yeah, I just want to be successful, living life, being happy, traveling the world and yeah. doing what I love. Yeah. That's amazing. So we've got a question here. So I want to go back to the questions. Um, so Kitsone yeah, Adventures says, do you think they made it harder for nannies and child carers with the paperwork? Oh, what, in so, Nigeria? Um, I'm guessing she means in general, like, because now there's a lot of paperwork involved in in, in childcare, um, so I, I think that's what she means. Yeah, I, well, mm. in, in terms of... No, I don't think they make it harder. Um, mm. I, I personally don't think so. I think if you're going to be looking after someone's child, yeah, there needs to be a lot of paperwork. You need to make yeah. sure that you know, you've got your nanny insurance, you need to make sure that you've got your DBS, your paediatric first aid, your safeguarding, your um, your um, um, CPD, your CPR. Like, you need to make sure you have everything possible. So I don't personally feel like there's too much paperwork. Um, someone just said something really nice. I don't know who that was, but thank you. Yeah, um, <laughs> nanny came on again. Amazing girls love my nanny friend. Amazing. That's great. That's great. So, Hello, and, you and see, that's the yeah, and see, that's the thing, because obviously when you work with um, certain people, you develop relationships, and, and I think in that way it helps your business, because more or so it's about how you do it, rather than what kind of accolades you have. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. that's probably Nanny amazing. is actually a very isolating career. You're by yourself a lot. Mm. There's not much human, in, like, not human inter there's not a lot of interaction with adults. So when, I think it's very important you have like a, a nanny network and 
it's only taken me 14 years to realize this um wow. <laughs> yeah. i wish i had um i wish i was more sociable when i was younger and i built up loads of nanny friends because the moment i started to do that it's just amazing the support that you get and it's so nice like, i love my friends to death uh, but when you talk to them about certain things they just don't get it but then you mm. find a nanny friend and you talk to them and they're just like instantly they get it and you're just like finally a relief someone understands right. what i'm going through and you find when you start sharing stories we've all been through the same thing we've all had the bad experiences we've all had the really good experiences we then find out that oh you need to know you're worth a bit more you're not charging enough oh my god you're on the page you're you know mm. so it's just really important so yeah it's just so important to have that nanny network it's so important wow so what advice would you give to anyone who, if not necessarily being a nanny, but just we want to get into childcare, what's kind of the main things, key points that they need to know before they get into childcare? Okay, make sure you get some qualifications, okay? <laughs> um, so some childcare qualifications, make sure you try and get some work experience, offer to babysit friends, um, children or um, friends of friends or, you know, even volunteer in a nursery. Try and gain some form of experience while studying if you can um and make sure that you research um child development make sure you research the eyfs make sure you research being ofsted registered make sure you get all your um pediatric first aids look into getting your nanny insurance um join some facebook nanny groups ask questions um you know if you know that you go to um there's a local like a baby and toddler group go there speak to some of the parents speak to some of the nannies offer some free hours if you can um just to gain the experience and just absorb yourself in the nanny community you know make friends and um yeah just put yourself out there get some business cards and offer your services so basically networking is pretty much what kind of keeps yes the, which the i hate right. what i've learned it's the best thing I, the thought of networking just freaks me out. I'm just like, oh, why? Yeah, that's but the thing. I when think, you actually yeah, do right. it, it's amazing. I've met some amazing people through networking. I've met some nannies now that, like, they can't leave me now. You're my friend forever now. So, <laughs> <laughs> so what, another point, another question I did want to ask you: Is there like a kind of a cutoff point that you take? Because obviously, nanny. Um, that kind of profession obviously we think it's just for children but has there been times where you had to um, do your profession with children that are a certain age maybe they're teenagers has that happened yeah okay yes it ranges it ranges um so uh let's see sorry i got thrown off by that comment thank you yeah <laughs> so it ranges because i've worked with children from newborn up into 16 years wow. um I think everyone has a preference. My preference is the early years, so zero to five. I love newborn right. up until four or five. I don't mind older. Um, it's nice to chop and change a bit as well. But I think my um, gift is with the early years. It's with the younger right. ones. Um, but that doesn't mean I wouldn't work for children that are older. Mm. Um, and I kind of like the balance. And that's why I think with my main positions, I get the younger children. I always like to have a baby and a toddler because yeah. I like to stay busy. I'm a, not a lazy nanny. I like to work. I like to work. I mm. like to work. <laughs> and I like things to be busy. I want the day to go quick because I've done so yeah. many things. I'm like, oh, my God, is that the time? I've got an hour left. Um, but the older ones are more independent, so they need you less. And so it's like it's more just entertaining and making sure they're not bored, you know, making sure they eat and make sure they do their homework. Um, mm. But I get bored quite easily, so I find I'm fully stimulated with the younger ones. So there's not – I wouldn't say there's a cutoff point. I would never – Mm. Um, the family couldn't come and say, "Oh, we have children this age," and I'd be like, "No, I'm not working for you." I would never do that. Never. Right. No. You're just getting some amazing comments here. Someone. Uh, I'm like, you uh, about yeah, you, you really are. <laughs> <laughs> and so one said, "Shada is beautiful." Another one, um, "You are an inspiration." So yeah, that's amazing. Thank I mean, this you. is what this is what happens when you do your job well. <laughs> And it doesn't become a job, it's a lifestyle, like we go back to. When you enjoy something so much, it doesn't, it's not a job, it's a lifestyle. And I think, I mean, it's demonstrated by, you know, what you're getting right now, so. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it so much. Amazing.
a lot there's a lot <laughs> so another question i do want to ask you is has there been i think we touched on it a little bit before but has there been any sacrifices because as you mentioned you know there have been times where you're basically isolated so has there been any other sacrifices that you made because of your career in, in yeah America? yeah it's, it's it's a i think children's a big thing because you think there is nannies that have children but you get once you have a child and you're nanny you are quite limited like you can't do the traveling as much or you know you have to bring your child to work so that in a sense is limiting but also mm. when i moved abroad i was a living nanny so that to me oh. was a very big sacrifice i'd been a living nanny before and it didn't quite work out Mm. So, but this was more a living nanny abroad as well so I'm away from wow. my family and I'm living with a new family so that was a big sacrifice for me um it was one of the best and worst times of my life um I had some amazing experiences as well um so yeah so you do some nannies tend to sacrifice the the family life but for me I think the only sacrifice would be if I was a living but I don't think I'll do living again um okay so why yeah. is that what, if i may ask why why would you not um, be living again what was this experience behind that okay so living for me um i loved it but i really am someone that loves my own space right and, and i found it very difficult living with a family um just little things at the time i studied my masters and you know i will probably be studying till like three in the morning and then um get woken up at six from screaming and you're like and then you want to get involved because you're in your room. You can't, you're not on duty yet, so you don't want to leave. And mm. then there's little things like you leave to go to the kitchen. The children want to play with you. You're not going to say no to them. Yeah. But exactly. you're not on duty. Yeah. So it's just like sometimes it was hard to keep a boundary. I think I was quite good at it. Um, but I think as well, I think when you live in, sometimes you might have your moody days and you don't want your employee to see you on your moody days you know us women we have all you know yeah, and some days you don't want to be around happens. people and so i think that was quite challenging um but yeah i, I think living is something that i wouldn't do again i would do it temporary i don't mm. mind doing it temporary but as a permanent position not really for me because i love my own space great honest response that's good um so a lot of questions. Question. Yeah. yeah there is um so let's go to the first one natural notes one said what countries have you nannied in oh okay oh, this is like, yeah. I'll be, um, <laughs> oh i'll be i've nannied in oman i nannied in san francisco i've nannied in oh. italy cyprus um uh spain different like i be for barcelona and um, spain uh oh god I can't remember any of it. In the UK, I've been to Huddersfield. Um, where else? Where else did I go? I think I went. I think I went to Switzerland. Oh, wow. Switzerland. But this is more like travel nanny in jobs. If that right. makes sense. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, Scotland. Look, see, my cousin just told me Scotland. How can I forget right. Scotland? So that I, I can't remember everything off my head. I've been to many, many countries. Oh, Nigeria. I did it in Nigeria oh, for well, a bit. Yeah, of course. Mm. Um, yeah. So, yeah. I can't remember all of them, but that's <laughs> the one I can remember. <laughs> so we've got another question for you um, by Nani Tutu. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, they yeah. said, what did you study for your master's? Okay. So I have a BA honours in dance and drama. And my master's is in childhood studies and early years. It'll be good to know them. Um, so another comment says, Nani Kyra or Kira, I'm doing a temp live in right now and I love it too. And same, I live in my own, I want, I live in my own space and family so nice. Okay, so just following up from what you were saying, how, you know, wanting yeah. your own space is important to have your own space. Um, yeah. Obviously some sacrifices you do have to make because your own space is probably non-existent when you're living yeah. um, Nani. But when you live in, you get your own room, your own bathroom. Like where I lived, it was very luxurious. They gave me a Range Rover. That was my car to drive around wow. i was like let's go <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> you know they gave me a range rover they yeah. paid for the food they paid for my accommodation i had my own ensuite bathroom i had my own room it was massive you know so you do get your own space but it's just um it's hard especially if you like the, what if you know sometimes they ask you to work and you don't want it like they might ask you to do overtime you don't want to mm. do it but then you live there so you can't even say oh i got something going on because they're like you ain't left your room Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? so it's, just, it's just a bit tricky. It's just a bit tricky. 
we got another question for you. Um, they ask, how do you find the language barriers when you're abroad? I didn't have an issue because you know you put the accent on like this. I don't know why when you go abroad you just go like this. And uh, you know I didn't. Um, in Oman, um, a lot of people spoke English, and if they didn't, they spoke Arabic. So my and there was a lot of British people in Oman, oh, a wow. lot. So I I tend to find I was out there and I'd be like, do you speak English? And they're like, yeah, yeah, we're from London. And I'm like, oh hi. Hey! <laughs> so yeah, so I found. A lot of people, you find a lot of British people go everywhere. Like, mm. we're everywhere. We're just taking over everywhere. So right. I didn't really have an issue with the language barrier. Um, I think when I've worked with families that English is not their first language, I worked for a Spanish um, newsreader. Yeah, that was actually quite fun, actually. Wow. Um, and she she spoke Spanish in the house and everything. I was like, half the time, I was like, I don't know what this woman's saying to me, you know, but yes. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so that was a bit tricky I used to say to her Her daughter was four And I was like What did your mom just say And she's like Oh mommy said da, 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 You know So um, Then I used to use Google Translate Was my best friend Oh gosh yeah Google, <laughs> I'd say what I need to say And then I'd be like This <laughs> So yeah <laughs> That worked for me Oh So this is great guys Keep the questions coming in Because obviously This is going to be Great advice and experience from someone who's in, been in the industry. So, you know, this is like oh, a perfect time to ask questions. So we've got one question coming in um, by Natural Notes. Um, and she asked, how did you find the cultural differences? Were you treated well? And that's actually a good question to ask because obviously, you know, when they see you first up, you know, they know that you're a black woman. Has that yeah. in any way kind of made some people hiring you give you the side eye or has there been kind of any yeah. sort of weird prejudice because of that yes definitely it's sad because you don't want to pull the race card but i have experienced prejudice and racism in the nanny world wow. mostly with agencies i will say um you have the experience you have everything and then they just don't put your cv forward wow or i've been very over the years i've built really good rapport with um agency consultants and they've mm. even said, um, Shah, don't go for this one. They, they don't want a black nanny. Like, they will say it wow. to you. And they're not meant to. Or they say, they will be very specific. They want them, the nanny to be this tall, five foot two. Or oh, wow. um, make sure they're Filipino. We don't want any blacks. Or, you know, mm. they, and even before, I had a, um, a consultant that was so lovely. She loved me so much. And she used to like, this family... Um, I have a feeling they don't want a black nanny, but you tick every single box they're asking for. We've sent over 20 nannies to them and they've just made, like they've just not accepted the nanny. So I'm sending oh. you. So she said, the mom kept asking for a picture, kept asking for a picture. And she was like, no, Charlotte's got all the experience she asked for. This is everything that you want. And I, when I turned up at the door, the woman saw me. Mm. Wow. <laughs> Did you see the oh colour just God. drained from her face? Like, but you know what? I take it around because they offered me the job after. Oh, they offered wow. me the job. I didn't take it, but because a better offer came in. But they offered mm. me the job, and um, yeah, I just make sure. Even with my family now, my mum boss said to me when she thought of a nanny, she wanted an older Spanish lady. Mm. I said, "Then you got a bald head Jamaican." <laughs> 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 but I am like the perfect fit for my nanny family. So I said to her, "In future, try not to be about." what you want in terms of how you want your nanny to look or how you want your nanny to be because mm. it might be that person that I think if I interviewed for my family now that I'm with, I don't think I would have got the job. Personally, I don't oh, okay. think I would um, And I don't know why, I just think, I don't know, because mum had a perception of what she wanted and unless she found someone that fitted that, it probably wouldn't have worked. But thankfully with the job I'm with now, I was temping for two weeks mm. and they were looking for a nanny and it just happened that the children loved me so I ended up staying. But... um. In terms of culture, when I was in Oman, because I was black, I actually got treated better, and it was so oh, okay. weird to have that transition. Mm. Um, breaking barriers, I love it. Yes, of course. Yeah, man. that's what it's that's about. What though, about. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah break that stereotype. So in Oman, it's the very, very status based. So it's like the Indians are like down here, which is so bad because they do all the poor labor jobs. Wow. Then you've got the Filipino, which is like one nanny, one family will have like eight Filipinos, like one Filipino per child. Um, and then you have 
the uh, I think the blacks and then the Omanis. So because obviously mm. Omanis and some of their skin is quite dark like yours as well, they think you're one of them, so they will treat you better. So for me, it was really oh. you know they're saying hi queen or hi empress, and I said, oh, this is different. I like yeah. this. I can, I can get used to this. But you do also have the um yeah. the misconception because a lot of them haven't seen black people, and I don't think Armani class themselves as black either. Even to me, you're black, but to them, they might not class themselves as black. So. Um, mm. that was the other thing and also it was a Muslim country so you know you need to make sure that you're respectable you're mm. not showing like skin I mean it's funny because on, on the beach you could just wear a bikini and fine and where I lived was um, a resort so it was a um, Shangri-La resort mm. so it, it had loads of tourists there and everything so it was quite relaxed it didn't it weren't really strict it was more when you went into the malls you have to make sure that your skirts you know below your knees and things like that but yeah answer wow. the question is there another question there is um so we got another question they said do you stay in contact with any of your previous families i'm sure the kids yes you. <laughs> of course oh, thank you so you see here these are my babies <laughs> all the cards that i get yeah there's a like, thank you Sean, and they give me cards and stuff so i do i stay in contact with not all the families because not all of them have ended well but the ones that have ended well i stay in contact with yes that's sweet. That is sweet, and especially because yes, obviously you build a bond. I wouldn't get them. them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, we, we, so the Nigerian family I was telling you about—that's them there. Um, some days, uh, like the last time I went and saw them, I just went on a Saturday. I said to the parents, "I'm not charging you. I'm just coming to see my babies." And I took them to their swimming class, mm. and I spent the day with them. And it's like they call me Auntie Shada now so it's like i'm oh, an auntie oh, you know okay, so, so you know I, I still for me nanny and like i said it's a lifestyle i don't just um nanny and then forget about your children if you want to mm. stay in touch i'm going to be in their lives forever whenever you need child care you got child care guaranteed because i'm going to be there right. so yeah i do that's sweet that's so sweet um another mm. question we've got a dose of beef she's a um, beauty blogger and she also has a child and um, so oh, she said do you have beauty children blogger? Yeah, she says, do you have a children of your own? And if so, how does it affect looking after your own children being a nanny? Very good question. I can't answer that because I don't have children, my lovely. <laughs> but I have got children. Technically, I say I have children. I just didn't give birth to them, yeah? So all my nanny babies, they're my babies. And I have um, got children and I have 13 nieces and nephews. So technically, I have children. I just didn't give birth to them. <laughs> <laughs> good answer and i can imagine of course obviously you said you don't have children but in in a case where someone does have children maybe finding that balance maybe could be difficult maybe not what's kind of like your you know opinion on that do you think it kind of will switch no i think it can work in your favor because some okay. families like nannies with their own child because moms like to hire moms and the mom what happens is if you have your own child and your nanny the mom then looks at you more as an ally like you're her friend more in a way but you also have the experience she probably doesn't have so your nanny but then they also get a playmate a permanent playmate yeah as well so it's a win-win situation really wow that's sweet um mm -hmm. and she said thank you for answering you're that's welcome sweet. my lovely yeah, 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 I, mean... the page. I heard you do beauty hey <laughs> <laughs> And I think especially now it's it's very, you know, such a good opportunity for mothers to ask other people in the profession, you know, advice, opinions, because it, it I think for a while, you know, it's kind of been a thing where a mum has to know everything. They have to know how to raise their kid. They have to know everything about, you know, behaviour wise. And I mean, there's nothing wrong yeah. in, I think just breaking that kind of social norm of where the mum should know every single thing no um, they shouldn't yeah it's a it's a learning experience especially <laughs> for a first-time mum like it's a learning experience yeah. of basically learning on the job do you know what mm -hmm. i mean so it's um mm -hmm. it's very it's very useful very very useful um so let's see if there's been any other comments just make sure we haven't missed any um so nanny kadri said i worked in the middle east and they had two filipinos per child mm -hmm. plus me yeah okay yeah yeah, and they and they don't treat them well either. They take their passports. Oh. Like one, one I'll give you I'll tell you a story, right? Mm. So one day I had so when I worked abroad, um you work six days on, one day off. Right. And that's long days as well. So oh, wow. in, in Oman the, the weekend, so what we will class as a Saturday would be the Friday. 
So, and then their Saturday would be like our Sunday. So I used to get oh. Saturday off. Yeah. Mm. So I used to work. Um, I used to work Sunday to Friday and have Saturday off. And one one of the first times I went to the mall on my own, I drove to the mall where we lived was out in the sticks. Yeah. <laughs> the, the first the first shop was like a forty five minute drive. Oh. And that's me driving for forty five minutes before I see people wow. or the shop. It was like, we're literally in the middle of nowhere. Mm. So when I got to the mall, I was, doing, you know, just browsing, looking around, whatever. This Filipino lady comes to me, she goes, Madame, Madame, can I talk to you for a minute? I was like, yeah, <laughs> you okay? She said, where's your Madame? I said, my who? She's like, your Madame. So out there, your bo- they call their boss Madame. So mm. I said, she's at home. And she's like, you here by yourself? I said, I'm grown. <laughs> and she's like, they're not, they don't take nothing from you. And I'm like, no. She's oh like, how God. did you get that? Like, I drove. And she's like, she was just in shock that mm. I was out of the house with no children, <laughs> no madame. And I drove there. She just, and I said, so where's your madame? She said, over there. And I said, so how did you get it? I just said, I went to the toilet. Mm. But it was just, I need a break from the children. Like, she was just oh like browsing. But I just thought it was so sad. Like, Wow. She was just really shocked to see me. Mm. And then when I think she heard my British accent, she thought, oh, she's British. So that's probably why she gets treated well. But it's hard because you find a lot of African nannies in Oman that get, mm. don't get treated well because, you know, some of them might have their papers or, you know, mm. things. So, yeah, it's a bit tricky. That's tricky. Crazy. So very tricky. It seems like you had a lot of experiences, though, just in terms yeah, of... Yeah, I have. I yeah. didn't live in the house of it, but yeah, I have. I thought I'd just share a bit with you guys. That's amazing. <laughs> so if anyone else has any more questions for Nanny Shaz, um, definitely get them in before we wrap up, because I think it's yeah, very important, you know, to get your questions out there and she'll, she'll, she'll answer the best that she can. Um, so can go... Yeah, of course. Um, so I'm just <laughs> going to see if I missed any comments. Um breaking barriers love it yeah that's what we just said trying to um, <laughs> um, so we had a comment from Bist Morgan um yes I had my nanny kids translate everything for me um but made me want to learn more languages yeah I'm, I mean especially now you know learning a language is especially so beneficial and I think in any profession mm-hmm. not just in terms of childcare I think any profession learning yeah. a language being open-minded so important. very important yeah being I'm learning open-minded. Spanish at the moment yeah. I'm gonna go on I want Spanish I want Spanish Italian and French I want those three. Oh wow Rap- yeah <laughs> so I'm learning Spanish now but I'm getting there I'm a bit of slow learner but we're getting there yeah do you ever teach, um, do you have to ever teach some of the um, children that you do take care of? Like in terms of, um, it could be basic math, English, science. Is that part of your Yeah, job that's well? literally okay. part of being a nanny. So oh, okay. when I hear like parents now are homeschooling because of COVID, this is what right. we've been doing. We've been doing this since oh, God knows okay. where. So we're okay. kind of, so that's another thing you said, what's a nanny? A nanny's also a teacher, right, you know? Right, right. We have to teach them like, the, what I'm doing now with my um, youngest nanny child is two is colours. So we're learning about colours. Um, mm. And also I'm teaching him how to write his name. Um, oh, I'm teaching okay. him his numbers. So he's counting, counting his numbers. Teach him to recognise numbers. And nanny's a whole lot. Wow. Yes, we are. We are. Mm. Give us our recognition. You right, know, we don't, right, we don't right. we're kind of like the forgotten child carer, I say, because people know, they just see us as a luxury, but they don't know how much we, work we put in. Mm. You know, we put in a That's lot true. of work. And if you're passionate like me, you go the extra, extra mile. I'm extra. So everything <laughs> has to be extra. You know? So if, I'm very funny. Like, even at work, Sometimes I cook and the food left over, I just leave it, like let the parents have it. So the other day the dad came home and he's like, you left that for us? And he's like, oh man, please don't ever leave. Like, do you know what I mean? Because yeah. you literally kids, you know, like you left us food. Like you cook for us. Like that's not really the job. <laughs> well, I was thinking, no, nah, I cook for the kids. But I said to him, I cook for the kids, but there's some left over. So you can have it, you know? But yeah, so you just have to go that extra mile as well. And um, yeah, we, we do teach. We teach, we teach an awful lot. We teach mm. an awful lot, you know. Oh. We teach them words. When I was, um, when um, the baby I look at, well, he's not a baby anymore, but he's my baby. When mm. he was younger, because I started with him when he was six and a half months. He's now two and a half, mm. nearly two and a half. Um, he 
he wasn't crawling, so I taught him how to crawl. Oh, wow. He wasn't walking. Eventually, he started walking. Um, but I, I taught him little things like when he's finishes with his plate, you know, you scrape it out in the bin, you put it in the sink. He mm. knew that from him, like nine months, and that was me holding him, making him carry his wow. plate, making him put in the bin. From when he could even walk, he was doing little bits like helping me put the clothes in the washing machine and things like that. Um, even um, like now um baby sign language he couldn't when he couldn't speak i taught him baby sign language so he could communicate with me the best way he knew how and that oh, wow. was a lot even his mom said he don't have tantrums like our first son was tantruming all the time but this mm. one don't have tantrums. I think because he knows how to communicate now when he wants you know when he says more he wants more when he wants to eat he says eat when he wants oh, his wow. milk he says milk you know he gives me all the signs so mm. and I always encouraged that so he learned how to communicate with me from he was like seven eight months so yeah it's something that we teach them we're teachers yeah amazing and as well as being a teacher um a dose of be asked is it a huge plus to know first aid training for a nanny it's, a ne it's not a huge plus it's compulsory pediatric first aid you can't call yourself a nanny if you don't have that mm. simple you need to have pediatric first aid. Even if you know it off your head, like now, I know it off my head. But even when my um, certificate expires, I'm still like a bit nervy. Like, no, I need to get this, you know, yeah. get the ball rolling. Has there been a situation where you had to put your first aid into practice at all? Yeah, many times. I had a child choke on me. Oh, my gosh. I had a child choke. You know, children fall over and they, get, they hurt themselves, they graze themselves. So I have a lot of that. But yeah, I've had I've had it twice with a child choking and gone like oh like blue, yeah. But how how but, do you remain so, I guess calm or and in motion because being in that situation is scary and I guess yeah. for a nanny like really, that must be yeah. just a, such a scary experience. Yeah, it's all internal. So my thing is, if I'm not calm, mm. I'm gonna panic the child, and that's the that's like the complete opposite to what I want to do. Right. So I need to be aware of my behavior and my my actions. So it's like in my head I'm going shoulder breathe, shoulder breathe, shoulder breathe, mm. shoulder breathe, shoulder calm down, calm down, shoulder breathe, shoulder breathe. Right. But on the outside I'm just zen. Yeah. <laughs> I'm zen. <laughs> I guess where, that's where that yoga comes in, isn't it? It just kind of helps you to kind of. And I meditate know. a lot. Mm. It's just like. Mm, you know <laughs> <laughs> but yeah I don't know I think children pick up on your energy okay. very much so they pick up on your energy so if you're quite a nervy kind of person eventually if a child is around you long enough they're going to start becoming quite nervy and um, that's probably why the children I look after are bonkers because I'm bonkers <laughs> they're like ah! when I walk in the house Literally, oh I can't get my coat off, and they're like, Tyler, come! Ah! And I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so Yeah, definitely, like, you know, you, you just need to be calm, and mm. just remember, you're the professional here, you know what you're doing, you know, and you know the right steps to do as well. Mm. Um, energy is everything. It's short. I got too much energy, as you look at yeah. me, so... <laughs> Because obviously, in terms, some children they're obviously not always open to the idea of having like a third person come into their kind of family. So, what are the icebreakers that you do, especially like for example, a first meeting when you are meeting the child or when you're going to be working with yeah. the child for a very long time? So, for me, I it always starts from the interview process, or okay. even from when they first send you over the job description. So, I'm talking like for in terms of if an agency see the job and they send it to you. I want to know as much information as possible about the child before even stepping in the house. Right. I'm asking so many questions because I need to get an idea of what mm. this child is like. I want to know their hobbies, what they enjoy, what they dislike, what kind of food, what's their favourite. And then I go in with what I know they like. So, for instance, the children I look after, at the moment, they're obsessed with superheroes. So I would might go oh, okay. with some like superhero stuff in my bag. I might put it on halfway through the interview and, you know, oh, play okay. with them or... I might even bring a book. I like to bring books to interviews. Um, so I ask the parents, what is it the child likes? And then I bring them a book that they can keep. Even if I don't get the job, they have that book. Um, another thing is, um, like, you just have to try and find out their interests. 
Mm. Um, what's another thing that I do? I haven't interviewed in so long. This is so bad. Oh wow, that's a good thing, um, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think a lot. Yeah, it is actually. Um, mm. And another thing is as well, just making sure you're at eye level with them. You're getting down. You're on the same level as the children, and just letting them talk, tell you what it is that they do, and just be really enthusiastic. You know, mm. um, even like, oh my goodness, look how big your room is. Like you have to be really yeah. animated. Can I see all your toys? What's your favourite toy? Show me your favourite toy. Or, right. you know, they had a nanny before. You asked them what kind of things they um, want that they did with their nanny, what kind of things they like. Um, and I would go in with, once the parents tell me what the child likes, that's my kind of gateway to get in. It always works. Uh, it's never failed me yet. Never failed me yet. Oh, wow. That's amazing. You know, there's a, a saying where if you step into someone's home, like you kind of get the vibe of how people, how they are like. Um, has that? Have you ever been right on those occasions where you had kind of a feeling of, oh, this is going to be a difficult family to work with. Oh, this is going to yeah. be a really good family. Have has there been experience like that? I, yeah, I've worked in some. In, I've gone to. It's weird because the some you've gone and you think amazing, and then you start and you're going, whoa! Oh wow! What is this? <laughs> no, they didn't show me this side. Right. Um, there was one that I knew for fact she had an issue with me being black because mm. just from she was like, "You're the nanny." I said, "Yeah." Your your shadow. I said, "Yeah." Oh, come in then. And I was like, "This ain't gonna work." Halfway <laughs> for the interview, I just said to her, "This is. I don't think I'm the right fit for you." She goes, mm. "No, you be I don't think I'm the right fit for you." Oh wow! Because she was very like, she was Italian. She was pregnant, and she was saying about she was very anal about the food. And I thought, oh. yeah, we are not going to get on because I'm not going to want you hovering over my back while I'm cooking. And she's just <laughs> like, right. the mm. temperature needs to be right. And da -da -da -da. I said, this ain't going to work for me. I'm not going to mm. waste this woman's time. Let me go on out my business. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So there's sometimes, but you can't, with Nanny, it's so hard because you don't know until you're actually in the job. In the job, I see. And this is why I try to always try to do a six week notice period, a six week um, pe uh, probationary period, mm. because that first four weeks could go so well. You see, on that fifth week, hey, hey. and then that sixth week, completely hey, hey. different. <laughs> so I always say six weeks. Let me know because I want to get out close. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. So what's the? I don't know if I asked you this before, but what's the longest time that you've worked with a particular family? Has it been years? Um, yeah, it's always kind of years. It's, um, uh, do you mean like a one permanent family? Because what happens with me is, yeah, I will start with. Okay, so if a permanent family is about four and a half years, I would say. Okay. But wow. families, it's gone up to ten years. Like, um, wow. it's funny enough because I was talking to, uh, like I said, the French actress that I uh, told you about. Mm. Her daughter's going to be nine or ten this year, and I started when she was eighteen months. Oh, so wow. Wow. that's like you know. So yeah, and I'm still involved. I still she still sends me pictures when it's her birthday. I send a present, and you know. Mm. So yeah, yeah. It's just I think it's just a lifelong thing if you get on with the family. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 So it's kind of it's just ongoing. Continue. Yeah, it's like what we mentioned before, you become part of the the family, extended family. Basically. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. Not what all else? the time, though. Sometimes <laughs> they want you to know that you're the help. Sometimes <laughs> they want you to know you're the help. Right. You know, you, you always know what their parents think of you when you meet the, the other members of family. Mm. So they always tell you some juice. You know, when the parents, when the like the cousins or the aunties get drunk and they start telling you the business, and you're like, mm, that what they really think? Okay. Oh my god! <laughs> I've had that before. You know when really? like the parents get drunk and then they start talking. And I'm just letting them talk. You know, because I'm nosy. You can talk. <laughs> I listen. <laughs> I can imagine you've had to kind of just not say anything, basically, because yeah. you see, it's like you see everything that's going on. So uh, as long as being good at your your job, you have to be a yeah. trustworthy person as well. I'm guessing that's some yeah, major definitely. factor. Definitely. And that's why celebrities make you sign non-disclosures. Right. Oh, girl, the things that go on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, wow. If the world knew this about you. <laughs> <laughs> you, don't, you don't say anything, you know. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, just seeing any last comments that we have. Um, 
Nanny Kim, the ego. You better tell them, Shada, that is childcare bible. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's true. Um, and energy is everything. Yeah, as we were saying, that's all it is. Energy, 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 energy. Well, that's great. Thank you so much, Shada, for, for, for this. It was really, really inspiring just to hear your story and um, having you. mothers on here get ask their questions because I'm sure they've yeah. been wanted to ask and get your opinion on it. Yeah, I hope I answered everyone's questions as well in the best way I know how. <laughs> <laughs> so um, anyone who's interested in finding you, um, you mentioned in the last previous live that we just had, um, where can they find your work and your links to your social media? Okay, so you can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter and YouTube at Nanny Shards and you can follow me on LinkedIn at Sharda Lambert. Okay. Perfect. That's S H A D A, <laughs> not the R, no R, yeah. Even though it's pronounced that way. So S H A D A L A M B E R T, Shard and Lambert. Everything Perfect. else is Nanny Shard, S H A R Z. Perfect. Thank you so much. And thank you guys for tuning in. It's been really, really thank good to have you guys involved thank in our conversation. Um, we hope you you know enjoy this and obviously gain an insight that not all nannies are the same and especially they don't look like mary poppins all the time this is no, they a, don't. <laughs> yeah exactly exhibiting and, and of course you know we're always about bringing light to black entrepreneurs black businesses that's the thing now i said it in the previous live as well all about just supporting each other and especially supporting black women men in the industry so important right now and i hope we yeah. can continue to do this because you know we've made so many successes so so far so you know yeah. what else who knows what else we can do the sky is the limit not there's no limit exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well thank, thank you so, you much, so guys. much you thank know, you. you're so beautiful as well thank oh, you thank you no problem thank Funny. you Thank you. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed thank it. Thank you, guys, so much. Join me tomorrow, guys, because I'm going live. Uh, Saturdays, I go live at 9 p.m. So if you watch my YouTube videos, I do a live every Saturday at 9 p.m. on the topic of my last YouTube video. So tomorrow, I'll be talking about sleep training. So if you have any questions on sleep training your children, um, if they're having a few issues now, especially with COVID, they're having problems staying, staying asleep, going to sleep, whatever. Anything sleep training, come over to Nanny Shaw's tomorrow at 9 p.m. and join my live, okay? Perfect. Thank take you care, so guys. much. All right, thank you so much. All right, take care. Bye. Bye.